tensions uh, and the drive, the imperialist drive to war towards Russia is escalating, very tense times, and also your uh, meeting, the venue mm. of your meeting has been cancelled today. Yeah. What is this government and the mainstream media preventing people from knowing and from happening? Basically, we know that the British and American government sending military lethal aid to Ukraine. They've, they're responsible for this conflict. This conflict lies at their feet. They uh, were in fully support in 2014 of the Euromaidan, which overthrew a legally elected government, which spoiled Ukraine into a war that's now eight years, heading towards 15,000 deaths and counting. And this is where we're at, and it needs to be discussed. And there is a media blackout. It is down to people like myself, freelancers. Um, I don't work for anybody, I don't get paid for anybody, I'm just a normal person, I've got a nine to five job in Coventry and using my, my own holiday, um, I pay for my own travel out there um, and just go out and just report, just wander around the streets with my camera. There are no Russian soldiers in eastern Ukraine, they are just local militia uh, and they're fighting against uh, the far right, western backed. Um, well, they're the terrorists, really. And they're we the back ones. those Nazi forces there. Of course. The, the West, we're only too happy to keep sending lethal aid. Uh, we're also sending massive amounts of money out there as well. So we're kind of bankrolling this conflict, keeping it going. What have you seen there recently that you want people of this country to know? If there is one thing you want to convey to them? It's the people the average people, the, the average man, woman and child on the street, uh, because of the conflict that the West have caused, uh, these people can't work. There's, there's no jobs. They're relying on humanitarian aid coming from Russia. We know it also has this massive knock-on effect because when the West go into these countries, they create refugees. The refugees come here. Then people turn around and say, why are all these refugees coming here? Well, if we didn't go there, start their wars, bomb them out of their houses, make it possible that they can't work, they wouldn't have to come here. But then that causes racism in this country because it's not long before people then go, oh, well, what about the blacks? What about the Asians? And it has this snowball thing, so it goes from that to this, creates problems in, in other countries. We shouldn't be going to these countries and financing these conflicts, and more importantly, starting these conflicts. So I went there to get an angle and just give my view on it and take photographs. How are the people fighting there? The people there are just fighting for their existence, for their cultural heritage. They want to be able to speak Russian. They love their Soviet heritage, their monuments. They've witnessed their um, Soviet monuments being pulled down. The street names, uh, named after Lenin, Gagarin, Pushkin, Tolstoy, they're having to be changed. Uh, this is all Western influence, and they're trying to erase history. And of course, you, you're aware of all the people who have been assassinated there by... Yeah, of course, yeah. This is Ukrainian forces that, again, backed by the West. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the, the major thing that feeds their resistance? It's the fact that, that they're not going to give in. They, these people are just Soviets. They, they've... Um, they're all descended from those 27 million that died uh, fighting against the Nazis, and they see this as very similar. They see it as very, and that's what's driving them. They says they couldn't do it to us in uh, 41 to 45. They're not going to do it now, and this is why they're still fighting. Real anti-fascist movement yeah. there, and it's joined by people. You, you you said previously in your talk by people from other countries. Of course, yeah. I mean, I'm working on a project at the moment where I'm speaking to uh, volunteer fighters. Again, these are just normal people. Uh, interviewed a guy just recently from Colombia. I've spoken to uh, people from uh, Serbia. So these people travelled from all over the world. Many, I'd say the majority were uh, left-wing, socialist, communist. They all had their own individual unique reasons for just leaving their family, heading straight to Donetsk. It was normally in 2014 when these volunteer battalions were being set up and these guys couldn't speak Russian at all. They've had to learn it on the fly. You had to learn some Russian too. Of course, I've been learning it for 10 years and I'm still no good at it, but I try. What is the next step for you? 
Next up, uh, whilst I'm in London, while I came down for this talk, I went to the Russian visa centre on Friday to apply for a visa. That normally takes about a month to come back. I'm hoping to get back out um, in Donetsk for April, May, but it is a changing ground at the moment. Um, I spoke to the press centre there. Will I be able to, to cross in? They said it's changing on a daily basis. They don't know. But either way, I'll head to Russia. Last time, I couldn't get into Donbass, so I went to Crimea. And I, uh, again, met fighters there and spoke to them. So you will be going back? 100%, yeah. Wonderful. So the, it's an urgent situation to build the, mm -hmm. uh, the anti-imperialist, anti-war movement in this country. Yeah. What do you think is the major obstacle in doing that? I think it's the media. The media are feeding this frenzy of the nasty Russians, Putin this. Uh, you know, they talk about Russians uh, gathering on the Ukrainian border. The, the Russians are actually on their own border. They're inside their own border and they can do whatever they like within their country. You know, so, uh, but it's the media, the way they've got this thing of twisting the thing. And your average person on the street doesn't know much about Ukraine. I mean, and, and, uh, and the majority of people don't know there's been a war going on for eight years. They only know now because it's in the news, because of the NATO operation that's happening out there. But it is important that um, a Stop the War campaign really does gather some momentum now. Maybe it's time to, to build a real campaign against the war. For sure, yeah. And your work is very, very precious and very important to that. Um, I want to ask you one last question. Uh, what would you say to people who think that Russia is the aggressor in this conflict? They're not. Yeah. <clears throat> You'll often find you know, you've, uh, you've got more in common with the average Russian person than you have with the, um, the billionaires that, that live in this country. So your average Russian person has got more in common with, with your average British person. And whenever you go out there, they don't speak about war, they speak about peace, and they'll invite you to into their home and, and stuff. But they also know that, you know, we've got a bad government that's peddling lies. But I'd encourage anyone, if you get a chance, do go and visit Russia. See for yourself. Don't buy into the media lies, uh, what they're telling you. Go and see for yourself. Book yourself a flight and go. And what about the, the, the attempt to completely uh, sh shut you up and uh, prevent the meeting from happening today? What do you have to say about that? The, the, the thing is, it was a public meeting, and if any Ukrainians did want to turn up, provided they were going to ask just normal questions and that, and I can put some clarity on the situation, you'll find a lot of these Ukrainians, uh, they, they just know what they've been told. They haven't been to Donetsk, they haven't been to Donbass to see. It's important that you see both sides of this conflict, which is what I've done. It's unique, the fact that I have been to both sides. So um, I would tell people, you know, just, just keep an open view and don't believe what you read in the papers. Thank you very, very much, Dean O'Brien. A very important message. And we should know who the real enemy is. It's the ruling class. The of ones course that it is. Are dragging us into this very, very dangerous territory of, 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 of war. Of course. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.